July the 18th, 2019. Guys, this is an update on our weak shields, grand solar minimum, and the uh, penetration of gamma radiation, which affects us here on the planet, guys. It uh, increased sunburn, skin cancer, crop damage, extreme storms, both um, in the winter and the summer. We've seen that, and we have an upcoming hurricane season, guys. But it says cosmic ray update. This is space weather. New results from the moon come out today. It says note to astronauts. 2019 is not a good year to fly into deep space, guys. And this is coming out right when you see two or three, I think, Musk and uh, a couple of other people there uh, from uh, Amazon. Guys, these guys are all trying to go into deep space. And this has a lot to do with uh, at, if anyone actually went through the Van Allen asteroid belt and landed on the moon in the first place. But again, note to astronauts, 2019 is not a good year to fly into deep space. In fact, it's shaping up to be one of the worst of the space age. Why? Guys, because of the increased gamma radiation that's not just affecting the planet, guys, when the sun is weak. The shields are weak. You don't have that energy for that gyro that we need to be turning and generating the strong magnetic fields. But it's the other planets. It's the entire solar system inside the heliosphere. We have our magnetosphere that protects us. But the heliosphere, guys, protects the entire solar system. So ev everything, especially in the inner solar system, is getting bombarded heavily, including the moon. Again, this Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter went up in 2009. They have a telescope that, uh, or sensor that measures this radiation. It's called Crater. And it stands for the Cosmic Ray Telescope for the Effects of Radiation. It has been circling the moon on NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter since 2009. Ten years now. Researchers have just published a paper in the journal Space Weather describing Crater's latest findings. We'll take a look at that, guys, because it goes right along with what we've been looking at the entire time. Again, the, the sun controls everything that happens on this planet. As far as weather, climate, earthquakes, volcanoes, and when we have weak shields, all of that is amplified. Now, guys, you've seen this particular chart for years on space weather and, we, and over the last three and a half four years 18 percent increase of this gamma radiation on earth but this is the first time i've seen them post the cosmic rays at the moon and guys you can see the proton flux here and uh, let me pull this down just a little bit you got your here we go january 1st 2015 to actually january 1st uh 2018 you can see the rise. It has doubled in proton flux. This is what we're talking about. From point 0.2 to point 0.4, doubling in what, guys? Four years. And we, what they'll do is at near the end of 2019, as they have it each year, post the 2019 information. As they get it all, it comes back. They're measuring this with the uh, lunar orbiter and here on Earth, space weather and uh some other people are measuring it uh, with the large balloons that go into the upper atmosphere. But uh, if we go back up and just a little bit about this article, it says the overall decrease in solar activity in this period has led to an increased flux of energetic particles to levels that are approaching those observed during the previous solar minimum in 2009 and 2010. Now, don't miss the point right here where they say, which was the deepest minimum of the space age? which points out very clearly, guys, that was the last solar minimum, and they're in 11.8-year cycles, which matches the orbit of the sun's binary twin, Jupiter. That's what it ties all this together in this cycle. Now, again, 2010, with 11.8-year cycle, we still 1.8 years out before this one drops all the way or starts to change. But remember, each of the next cycles are going to be uh, weaker and weaker. Weaker shields, more intense winters. You're talking about um, uh, events that would replicate the modern minimum. 
And guys, if you haven't heard us talk about this before, when that occurred in the 1800s, you had a, a year without a summer in the northern hemisphere of the United States. It was the great, greatest migration to California in history. It even was, uh, it surpassed the gold rush because people, their crops fell. They had nothing to eat. There was no Walmart grocery store. You understand what I'm saying? They migrated to California to survive. So the sun's effects on this planet are dramatic. It says this always happens during solar minimum. As solar activity goes down, cosmic rays go up. The last two solar minimum have been unusually deep. Listen. Leading to high cosmic ray fluxes in 2008, 2010, and again in 2018, 2019. These are the worst years since humans first left Earth in the 1960s. They were talking about when we got into the space race. It says, again, you're looking at the latest data going back. Again, they will add it up for 2019, but from the crater center on that uh, lunar orbiter now the actual report was published here at agu 100 which is advancing earth and space science and that again agu pubs dot online library says we report updated measurements of the integral fluxes of energetic protons helium ions and heavier ions as measured by the cosmic ray telescope it says in an earlier report we presented the methodology used to extract linear energy transfer spectra and integral fluxes for particles with sufficient energies to fully penetrate the telescope. Results were presented for the time span from late 2009 to the end of the calendar year 2014, a period that encompassed the rise of solar activity from deep solar minimum. Guys, we watched a lot of those solar flares, remember, and the filament releases. Uh, we saw a lot of X flares, and we saw some during that period of time. We saw a lot of havoc, and it says that uh, here, and that's uh, the end of cycle twenty-four. It says here we update the results with data obtained from that point in time through the end of twenty eighteen. In the declining phase of cycle twenty-four, our next cycle, guys, that we're going into would be twenty-five fluxes obtained in the most recent data approaching the peak levels observed again in 2009 and 2010. The results can be used as input to models of solar modulation, that's just a repeating of the cycles, of galactic cosmic rays, and is also relevant to human exploration of deep space. And there you have it, guys. More and more people are starting to pay attention to this, and we again, I said it's a new science for two reasons one our instruments are being updated by almost daily technology and we're dropping and as we're doing that guys we are going into a grand solar minimum and the last time that happened that nobody knew what a satellite even was okay so this is a new science and it will affect everything that we see in the upcoming years again overheating a lot of places still getting cool late into the uh, summer in the northern hemisphere, in the upper elevations. Hurricanes could be off the chart. But guys, we're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.